So most of you, or I think all of you guys, um, have been in a male-dominated environment. So I'm a full potential coach, and I coach a variety of clients. And I found there's one common theme among motivated and talented females, like yourself, and that is um, a lack of self-confidence to reach their full potential. That comes across by not speaking up, um, uh, maybe not sitting at the table, and just having that confidence of you know being yourself and you living with your full potential. Today, I would like to talk about five key principles: how to build self-confidence to lift to your full potential. Um, while I'm um, telling my little story on actually um, setting this world record, um, I would like you to think about um, your position while where you are um, in that male-dominated environment where you just raised your hands up, and your goals. What keeps you away from how to reach um, your full potential and how you can use those upcoming five principles in your lives? I'm a cyclist. Um, I've lived in five different countries, and um, I've done over 200 group rides. Um, and most of the time, I'm basically the only female, if not one of the few females, um, on those group rides. But for me, it's not just about being equal and being part of the group. I believe no matter in what environment you are, how challenging it is, it is about you. It's about reaching your full potential. And that's, that, shouldn't, that shouldn't be just being equal. It should be about whatever you want to achieve. So I decided to set a world record. Um, because I do like walking my own talk of living into my full potential. And I want to push my own mental and physical barriers. And I wanted to bring a message across of inspiring others to go for that challenge. So have you heard ever of um, the Tour de France? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, raise your hands if you've heard of it. So, Good. The Vuelta a España is the Spanish version of the Tour de France. It's one of the hardest cycling challenges in the world, and currently only raced by male professionals. There's no such thing as a female race. Well, I decided to do it. At the same day as the male professionals, at the, um, the same, same distance. Just to give you an idea what that means, it's three weeks long, over 2,000 miles on a bike, that would be 129 hours of riding. Um, I don't know if you do spinning classes. Mm -hmm. Just imagine eight hour spinning classes for 16 days in a row. That is 129 hours of riding. Even for like a cyclist, that's a long time on a bike. And then 160,000 feet of climbing, um, riding uphill. That's 111 times going up the Empire State Building. So as you can imagine, looking just at the numbers, that's a big challenge. Doesn't matter if you're a cyclist or non-cyclist, that is a big challenge. In fact, actually, 80% of the people told me it's impossible to do. 80% of the people. And a Russian acquaintance basically was pretty straightforward in telling me, Monica, your plan sounds very unrealistic. Mm. Are you sure you can or won't do this? When you're looking at your own goals, do you find yourself often that people are telling you it's impossible to do? Yes. Or even worse, are you telling yourself that it's impossible to do? Yes. Well, that's a bad thing. <laughs> and here comes actually what we're talking about. It is because the key for all of this, to do it anyway, is self-confidence. I would like to give you five key principles for, the, for building self-confidence, for develop, developing self-confidence. Um, and think about really about your own goals, about the time when you're telling yourself it's impossible to do or when other people are telling you it's impossible to do, then it's, that's the key moment to have self-confidence, especially in a challenging environment. What would be, for example, also like a male-dominated environment when people are looking at you and thinking that it's maybe not possible to do. The one, so easy, but so hard. Be yourself. Especially in nowadays um, uh, environment where we're constantly told how imperfect we are. On Instagram, social media, um, marketing campaigns, we're constantly told what we aspire to be and that we're always imperfect. We always have to reach something better than we are. But I'm telling you here, you should appreciate and accept yourself, all your strength and also your weaknesses, especially your weaknesses, because 
oftentimes we know our weakness is better than our strength, right? Because we know, um, we're told the entire time um, our weaknesses. I also challenge you, are really your weaknesses your weaknesses or could they be turned into strength? When I was training for the welter ride, for this world record, I had to ride up 111 times the Empire State Building, right? <laughs> and I'm, I suck in climbing up the mountains, to be quite honest. So for me, I could have just beaten myself up and saying, oh my God, you know, I have to climb up all those mountains, 160,000 feet, I will, you know, I will suck to do it. But I decided, you know what? This is actually a strength, going slowly up the mountain. You know why? I'm in Spain. I can enjoy the scenery so much longer when I'm going slower up the mountain. <laughs> well, I did go and I really enjoyed the scenery. But I'm also challenging you. When you're looking at your weaknesses, are they really weaknesses? Or you actually could use them into something, you know, powerful. That is so important, especially for being self-confident. But appreciate and accepting who you are. Live your best version. It basically means creating your own path. Um, when we are aspiring to go for a goal, um, there are people telling us like how to go for this goal, and this might or might not work for us. And actually, this might even set us for failure because it doesn't. It's not us. Um, when I was training for the world, right for this world record, I mentioned two thousand miles. I had to do a lot of kilometers on the bike. And I, so many people told me, Monica, you know, you should sit on the bike for six hours a day riding around. Well, I lived on a small little island. By day three, I would have ridden all the roads on the island. So I would have gotten bored. So I decided, you know what, I have to change somehow my strategy to get all the kilometers in without actually realizing that I have to train for this. So I decided to ride to my hometown, Munich. I had a small little backpack and off I was um, riding for five days and over 600 miles to Munich. But I also decided, you know, I have actually a mission, a bigger mission here than just training. I wanted to inspire others to go for their challenge and live to their full potential. And there, there are people who cannot choose their challenges. Mm -hmm. So I decided to visit children's hospitals in the cancer section to give them a little smile on their face with my red woman dress. <laughs> it also reminded me that it's actually a privilege for me that I'm able to do this. So oftentimes when we look at our goals, we are our own big limitations. We can achieve them, so why shouldn't we? So for that, create the best journey you can, a journey of success, to use yourself, your strength, to uh, um, reach your goal. Surround yourself with people that support you. Here we are, during the Walter ride. Day nine, I have been riding already over 600 miles. I slept an average of five to six hours a day. Physically and mentally, I was very exhausted. At day nine, I woke up at 4 a.m. because I had nine hours of riding ahead of me. The last thing I wanted to do at that time was riding my bike. I was just exhausted. But the person here to the right, his name is David, was my support person. He encouraged me along the way. He supported me, gave me the food, the water, everything, what I needed and gave me a very emotional hug once I crossed the finish line at the stage day nine. Oftentimes when we have good days, we don't need the support. It's during that bad days, those low moments where we need that support. So when you're looking at your close circle of friends and the environment you're talking to, are they generally supporting you? It is so crucial because there are a lot of people who actually, you know, they're, they're there, but are they really supporting you? Yeah. Surround yourself with people who generally support you through the good and through the bad moments, but that gives you the confidence to achieve those even seemingly impossible goals. Do what's right for you, not what's easy. So when I was preparing for the welter right, not only the ride itself was tough, but actually the preparation. I had to do everything by myself. I basically became a project manager for 10 different tasks. And I mentioned 80% of the people told me it's impossible to do. So fundraising was a very tough job. No one wanted to give me money because they thought I'm failing anyway. So why give me money? So, and also getting that support team until I got David, the logistics, there were so many things I just had no idea about and I had to figure out by myself. 
One day, I received a phone call from a Swiss organization and they offered me everything what I needed. They told me, Monica, we have the money for you, we have the support team for you, all the logistics, everything what you want. And I was like, well, this sounds too good to be true. And they said, yeah, the only thing is you have to join our project. It wouldn't be just Rad Monica, the Welter Ride, it would be like the name of that Swiss organization. It didn't take me even a second to decline because I knew that my message, what I wanted to bring across to inspire others to go for that challenge would never have been conveyed. It would have been just setting a world record, which is good by itself, but there was so much more in that project. And those pictures you see up there would never have been taken. People actually knew about my project all of a sudden, saying, Bonus Monica, with posters in small little towns which I didn't even know that they existed. And the best part was on the upper right, um, upper high, uh, right hand, a father and his 11 year old son joined me on Sunday morning at 6 a.m. for like 26 miles just to be part of this journey. Oftentimes, when we go for something and we are in this challenging environment, it is too, sometimes too easy to go the easy route. But stick to your own morals, stick to your, what you really, why you're here for, what your goals are. Because the, you can achieve so much more than just going that easy part. And that gives you also that confidence you need in any type of environment. Last but not least, you are an equal. There's a reason you're on the table. There's a reason you're in that board meeting. There's a reason you're in the gym. Um, oftentimes, we're making ourselves naturally inferior because we're believing that we are, you know, in a, like the minority. And um, just by our, how we behave, we're making ourselves inferior and other people know that immediately and be um, treating us this uh, too. So when you're walking into a room or wherever you are, wherever your male-dominated environment is, know that you're part of it. You're an equal. There should be no reason that you think you're inferior. And even more so, it is not just about us. It's actually about what other people see in us because you are a role model. Look at this picture. Do you see the difference? Yes. This picture has been taken at the last stage of setting this world record. The tables have turned, all women and one man. Yeah. Because I was able to inspire others to go with it. So when you're achieving your goals, when you're going for your goals, other people actually observe what you're doing and feel inspired and want to do the same because they're thinking, when anyway, she can do it, I can do it, yeah. right? Because at the end of the day, it's so much more than a world record or whatever goal you want to achieve. I was, uh, my project was in 50 different media outlets, in 10 different countries, in five different national TVs. Would I have ever imagined this at the beginning of, the, of this project? Never. Would this ever have happened if I listened to those 80% of the people who said it was impossible? And why, why is this possible? Because believing in yourself and your goals being confident about what you want to achieve. So how to be a self-confident woman in a male-dominated environment? Be yourself. Know and accept, appreciate yourself. Live your best version, create your path. Don't copy just a path from someone else. Surround yourself with people that generally support you. Do what's right, not what's easy, and you're equal because Self-confidence is the most attractive quality a person can have. How can anyone see how great you are if you can't see it yourself? Thank you. Thank you.